Back in 1973, the economist E.F. Schumacher famously declared that in this world, small is beautiful. In the summer of 2005, Shetland proved that in every respect, including sport, he was right. Now on BBC One Scotland, welcome to the Games. In July 2005, the Shetland Isles hosted the 11th Island Games. Local athletes took on teams from as far away as Bermuda, Rhodes and the Falklands. Shetland is the smallest population ever to stage this many Olympics. With 24 islands taking part and more than 2,000 visiting competitors, it was a week to test Britain's most remote community to the limit. But the story starts on the mainland. It's ten days till the opening and two key organisers, Sandra Jameson and Fiona Daly, have come to Aberdeen to shop. When is the event? It's um, Star Sun on the 9th, 9th of July. July. The opening ceremony is what we're concentrating on at the moment. That is gorgeous. Oh, yeah, I know. Like yeah, it's nice. <laughs> there's my tiny outfits in a winner. <laughs> no, nah, don't like you. There's no any, there's no, no any other marks on another floor or anything. I'll hear this poor not... wife demand it. I was thinking about a jacket with a pair of breeks or something, but that's why I'm going on to the skirt yeah, side of it. Yeah, Because okay. I think I've gotten... Okay, plenty of breeks. Plenty of yeah. breeks at home. Sandra Jameson is the chairperson of the Shetland Island Games Association, a duty she shares with working in a local household store. Across Shetland, from Unst to Sumbara, the flags of 24 participating islands are going up. Has you got to come down? Ah, there he goes, sir. I mean, the whole idea is for folk that doesn't have time to come in the shop to say, see did you see on shop window that yeah. had the flags up? I mean, if they're passing by in a bus, this is going to look pretty good. No, Peter, that attempt a 24-hour rest on your back if you've done that. Right, we'll see what like this is going to be now. What would they say? The Western Isles yeah. is the only ones we had a straight knot. The rest is not The rest bad. is pretty What's well specific. What's the thing of the sellotape? It looks OK. I mean, you can't tell it's the You can't tell. It's you the can't tell. Up she goes. <laughs> <laughs> Yucky dar or something. <laughs> Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Morning. What do you think of our? Yeah, we're from Faro. Faro. Very yes. good. <laughs> We've got to two islands as well. Yeah. yeah Froya and Heathrow. Island name, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. This looks very pretty. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's to catch the passers by as they <laughs> yes, go past. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. We'll see you next week then. Bye. Yeah, okay, bye. 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 I'll go and straighten up the western islands then. We'll hear a look at it okay. from across the road. Okay. Ireland, Alderney, Bermuda, Cayman, uh, Falklands, Faroes, Faroya. The next one is Prince Edward Island. We'll go back Islands. to yeah. Greece. Greece. Uh, Shetland. <laughs> the Island Games 2005 are being organised from a small office in a lane off Lerick's Main Street. Fiona Daly came back to Shetland to be one of the full-time organisers. It's a position which has made her a local celebrity. This was um, made for me after the, my last appearance on TV by my dear boss, Gary Jakeman. Thanks, Gary, um, for any future media appearances for putting on my head. So, yes, not got it on today, but you might see it in the future. <laughs> Fiona comes from the Shetland island of Walsa. Before joining the games team, she worked for an investment banking firm in New York. When I was in New York, I was fairly in the New York bubble. <laughs> but um, certainly after New York, when I came back to Shetland, I was always keen to get involved with the games and um, 
introduced to the, that through my sports involvement and sports coaching. So I, w I knew it was an event that I wanted to be part of. Um, to what extent I thought I'd be doing this or be in the midst of that is different. But yeah, no, it's good. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity, yeah. so take it when it comes, really. Sandra's own sport is archery. Coaching the team 16 years ago, she realised the Island Games could be staged in Shetland. On my home territory, it would be nice to shoot as well, but you can't do everything. I, I remember joking right for the start, well, because we were in Faroe, and I mind thinking, gosh, if we can, if the Faroese can do this, we can do this, basically. Uh, it was a few years after that that I started to say, like, oh, OK, I think we could easily do the games, and I was quite uh, adamantly ignored. <laughs> and it's only over the past few years that it's sort of been taken up and decided, right, we'll try and bid for it. Hi, hi. How's it going today? Oh, fine. Lovely Could day. I get you to put up a games poster yes, for me? No, there's two sizes. Three one or a big one, what do you think? And I just think that Falk and Shetland will just love it when they see it. It really is something that's... I feel very strongly about it. Th I think Shetland is so capable of doing this. I've been... The Fox offering to buy them off me. Cos really? they're real... Yeah. They're saying, can I buy one? And I say, no, they're just for giving out. As Shetland's children head for their summer break, the countdown to the Island Games begins. Schools and village halls are being transformed. The Island Games will bring more than 2,000 athletes to Shetland, twice the total number of hotel beds. Part of the solution is 500 portable beds and improvised dormitories in outlying communities. It's a different kind of morning assembly for the headmaster and janitor at 8th Junior High School. Although, with 56 visitors from Estonia on the way, language could be more of a challenge. I don't know if they'll understand Shetland. <laughs> wife, will, wife will be proud of me, my out the bed. <laughs> Nursery teacher Ingrid Smith and her cousin Jane Sinclair will be volunteer attaches for the island of Sarama. This is our 56th bed we've made today. <laughs> Shetland will be fielding 250 competitors in the Games. Experienced athletes alongside beginners keen to have a go. Ten miles outside Lerwick, Karen McKelvey, president of the new women's football team, is on her way to training with the team captain, Brenda Leesk. for when we first started. We were a bit two stone heavier. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> In picture of my friend, she's quite hilarious. <laughs> we're mums doing it for our fun. <laughs> we're not, we're not a professional training. football player. We're an expert training. Well, I've been training for eight <laughs> months. <laughs> first kicked the ball about eight months ago. Take where you're going to start. And you go and attack the ball. Attack the ball. Next two. Football is one of 15 sports contested at the Island Games. There's no history of women playing on Shetland, so the team have been put together from scratch in less than a year. That was a bacon shot. Next two, here we come. With six days to go, the Games office is in the final phase of the three-year preparation. But Fiona's day is disrupted by finding her boss, Gary Jakeman, is fogbound on the mainland. Gary went to Dorkney on Thursday to pick up some athletics kit that the uh, picky centre has kindly um, re given to us for the week of the games. And um, of course, the fog came in and he got stuck. So he ended up going down to Aberdeen last night, and uh, now he's hoping to get up on a 
dinner time flight back to Shetland. The fog is the, the biggest uncontrollable item for next week. Um, so that's why I'm not looking at the long range forecasts. <laughs> Cyclist Carlos Ruiz is on his way to work. It's a 54 mile round trip every day. The journey has helped him become one of Scotland's top cyclists. The events I do are usually time trials, which are steady paced, so I think the endurance side of it works quite well for that. Carlos works at the Sullumvo oil terminal and travels to the mainland regularly for competitions. Because we work shifts, then I have um, every second or third weekend off, so I try and get away to, to compete. That usually involves a plane trip down to Aberdeen and, and back again, so it takes most of the weekend just to do one event. It's not cheap. <laughs> Don't tell the wife. <laughs> Sullumvo is a hub for oil coming from the North Sea for onward tanker journeys. The Island Council takes a financial levy from every barrel of oil that passes through and the money goes to improve the island's infrastructure. Shetland is a group of more than 100 islands, 14 of them inhabited. They share eight recreation centres with swimming pools, bringing sport within touch of even the remotest communities. The game we played the other night on Wednesday night, excellent, excellent exercise. They're a good little team, they knock the ball about, but today we have to do exactly what we did on Wednesday. We have to go out with the work rate exactly the same. It's the last chance for the Shetland women to get match practice before the competition. They've played this team before, but never won. Get the work rate right and you put the opposition under pressure. When you put the opposite under pressure, they'll give you the ball. Nobody else plays women's football in Shetland, so their arch rivals are the under-13 boys team. <laughs> well done! <laughs> the boys score first. In fact, they run rings around the women and score three times in the first few minutes. But coach Derek Bradley is optimistic. We're standing off them still. Ten months ago, we'd have been lucky to come away with a lot of double-figure defeats. But now, my, my views are now, we've got to try and get points in this tournament, and I do believe we can come out with this tournament with points in the league table. Yes! yes! Maternal instinct gives way to competitive spirit. Well done. Right. Pick that up, pick that up. Women stamp their authority on the under-13 boys to win 5-3. Yes! It's their first victory and it sets them up for their first international match in five days' time. That's okay, just nice and, nice and easy. Just a quick one then, just nice and easy. So they're bouncing the step now, they're warming down. <laughs> Shetland's position in the North Sea brings a Scandinavian international atmosphere to Lerwick. But with Estonian, Inuit, Swedish and Greek among visiting teams, communication could be a problem for some of the volunteer attaches. And the language is that Anu mostly speaks English. Yeah, she'll, she'll be able to help you. Um, if there is any problems we understand and people, then definitely go and speak to her. The language of the games itself is English, so... Um, other than any basics that we might try to use pictorial yeah. messages, <laughs> rather as uh, English, but no, I know I'll keep you right. Superb. Claire Wilson has come home to run for Shetland. At 19, she's already one of Britain's top young women athletes. The Shetland men need all the help they can get. Gentle formula for babies. <laughs> you will ensure a soft and perfectly smooth skin do not swallow. <laughs> oh, no, why did you pull it back? No. No. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. There are just three days of rehearsal remaining for a spectacular opening ceremony featuring a hundred Shetland children. 
The Arts Trust have brought in a professional choreographer to work with the director, John Haswell. It will go into one, we'll need something else as well, but it's a, big, it's a good start. Should we give it a try? Can you get into your sales and shut them in beginning position? Okay then. Now really, really use your body, really accentuate. Fishing is still a big part of life on Shetland. The men's football team captain, John Montgomery, is part owner of the white fish boat, The Resilient. Fishing is in his blood. It's been a struggle this last few years, and uh, I think the, the political side of things has made it really hard for us. Hopefully it's on a turn and there's a few good years in the future to come. John's home island is Walsa, the fishing capital of Shetland. Everybody is into fishing, the whole island survives on it. And uh, just comes with the youth, like everybody, it's in everybody, really. It's where I've been brought up at, and I lost the area. I don't think there'd be another place in the world that I'd like to stay, other than this island. It's our family and that stays on the island and uh, everybody, just the community feeling in that, it's, it's good. Two days before the games start, there's a wedding on Walsall. Traditionally, everyone on the island is invited to come dance and celebrate at the two-day event. The bride and groom will leave the reception to visit relatives who can't make it. This time, some of the islanders are elsewhere. John Montgomery is on the Shetland mainland. The men's football team have never won a medal at the games, but this time they are training harder than ever. <laughs> Fog flirts with the summer sun over Lerwick, but at least the games director, Gary Jakeman, has made it back. Unlike the expert he desperately needs to unlock and assemble a portable grandstand. Our seating unit, um, KL Seating, the, the, the owner who's coming up to supervise their installation, um, actually flew over Sumber Airport three times today trying to land. Currently is back in Aberdeen and unable to get the last flight this evening. So we hope he's going to be on the first one and we'll have these seating units open first thing in the morning. At the, the moment, other planes are coming in the morning, but yeah. we can't move on if and I wouldn't say until we can what the weather is like. Yeah. There's no point in moving <coughs> others' bags. It's something you get used to, but when you're staging a major event like this, it's nothing you can plan for. You just have to go with what weather you're given. Shetland has a microclimate that means the weather can differ in just a few miles or even across a bay. The days before the opening ceremony have seen blue skies and a strong hot sun. Conditions often paid for by long spells of fog. Most vulnerable of all is the airport at Sumbara, which can sit under a blanket of fog. Swirling fog that can beckon planes in, then close around them. As the volunteer attaches meet for the last time, the worry is the weather. The other islands have been warned, but with 15 of the 24 teams planning to fly in, fog at the airport would be a disaster. But we hope that all the islands have heeded our advice and taken out additional insurance for their charters um, so that they aren't left on the ground, which technically could happen and did happen to the Shetland team in 2001 when their second plane didn't bother to land and flew back to Norway. So it has happened. We hope it isn't going to happen uh, again here, but we have to plan for it. 
get Jack McConnell out of the door at 16, uh, 1835 for a 10 minute photo opportunity with, ah, yeah. with, the, Media. with the teams. Outside, the weather takes a sudden turn for the worse. We might have to hold on this because it's that to then. With less than two hours to go before the opening ceremony, what has been a light drizzle is becoming more persistent. The things you think you'd never hate a day before the opening ceremony. I better put on mascara since it's a big occasion, but I better not put on too much. Meanwhile, Sandra Jameson is getting ready to play her own small part in history. Sandra's shaky hand takes over. So you're shocking. No, no, I'm not. I was, no. no, I'm not yet. I'm telling you because it's no, my brain is not going into speech mm, mode. mode yeah. At the moment, my brain is, is the first minister going to land in time mm. and everything's going to go smoothly for the opening ceremony. Uh, so once I get into the, oh my heavens, they're going to perform and your lovely lass is going to sing. And I'm going to try not to greet. You're excited, Mayor's nervous, I'm excited, Mayor's nervous. No, I'm just wanting it to happen. I mean, look mm -hmm. at that. You've seen our track suits today. Mm -hmm. I'm awful proud. Yeah. I'm awful proud of you as well. Mm -hmm. okay. My head is, my head's going to be that big. They might, they might have to alter something when I go in to click them in. <laughs> but, I can, I'll be really nervous for you, like yeah. just before you start. Yeah. I can tell my heart will be going just like this. Because Cause Louise, we're both like that when she's going to do anything. We're I've like kind that. of been building up with you along, kind yeah. of seeing you going through the, <laughs> getting ready and things. So I'll be nervous for you, but I can, you'll be fine. Yeah. I'll mix well. that greeting, possibly. And I love you lots. <laughs> okay. Thanks. But as Sandra sets off for the arena, the weather breaks. At Clicky Min, the rain becomes torrential, and the organizers consider cutting the ceremony short, but press on. Sandra Jameson. The Shetland Island Games Association are delighted to welcome our island competitors and friends to sunny Shetland. Click him in is saturated. The moving stage awash. At the last minute, the entertainment performance is cancelled. Now, we were all expecting some entertainment from the Shetland Arts Trust tonight, but unfortunately, due to the way... Uh, the decision was made by other people on our behalf that the entertainment would not go ahead. And I've got a hundred incredibly upset youngsters up in the hall at the moment, but we'll try and salvage something, I suppose. I'm gutted. Yeah. I'm devastated. But, you know, and the, more for them, I suppose, you know. Um, They've worked so hard and they were really hyper and they were really up for it and uh, so they're a bit deflated at the moment but, uh, but at least they're dry, they're inside. <laughs> and it is an honour and a privilege for me here to declare the 11th 
NatWest World Island Games Open and wish you the very best of competition. Thank you. It's island life, it's, it's what we get used to. Um, it can be beautiful one day as it was yesterday. Today we have rain and heavy cloud, but we've gone through the formal processes of opening the games. Everyone is cold and wet, but tomorrow is the first day of sport, and I think that's what everyone's here to do. They will compete hard, play hard, and I hope they have a great time. They'll leave here with memories that will last a lifetime. Day one of the Island Games 2005 in Shetland and the cycling time trials are warming up. In the time trial, riders set off at one minute intervals and race against the clock. Shetland medal hope Carlos Rees sets off on the 25 mile course. It's a road he knows well, and he's hoping home advantage will see him through. He's raced his main rival before. Andrew Roach of the Isle of Man. Andrew is the last rider to start. Halfway through the course, the riders make a U-turn and head back towards the start. Yeah, well, Andrew Roach has just gone through. He's from the Isle of Man. He's just gone through in 26 minutes, 58 seconds. And the local favourite, Carlos Rees, uh, is in fourth place at the moment with 27 minutes, 35 seconds. So he's still not too far away. At Scalloway, Derek Bradley, the Shetland women's football coach, prepares the dressing room for the first game against Bermuda with manager Craig Watt. One or two nervous girls out there, just getting the rubs down. That'll do in the world of good. Yeah. Getting a pre-rub and stuff like that, they'll be fine. I can't believe the sun's shining. Mm -hmm. I was banking on wind and rain. Uh, yeah, we really should have had wind and rain for Bermuda. Yeah. Freak <laughs> them out a bit. Karen's panicking there about who to pick up, what to do, where to do. Well, she always worries about it. She seems OK. I think once she gets started, she'll be fine. 17. Looking for 12. No, I think they've got more experience than we thought they had to begin with. But it, it shouldn't be too bad, I'm hoping. Once they get out, it'll be fine. There'll be no problems whatsoever. So they're going to be great. Mm-hmm. Positive, positive. You sound like you mean it. I think they'll be so they'll be so put off trying to shoo the sheep off the off the field first. <laughs> I reckon there's going to be a lot of people here watching. Yeah. Pretty nice to see the girls' faces when they come in here later on when they see the strip out again. Because that first time we did it, they thought it was great. Like they just loved it. Thought, did we win? <laughs> Can't remember if we did. No. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. Right, girls. You've got ten minutes before we go out there and start playing your first ever proper competitive football match. OK. This is when it counts. All the friendlies are gone now. This is when it counts. You will not be beaten. You will win every single ball that is there to be won and anything else. Play for the badge that's on your shirt. You are playing, you are representing the place where you live, Shetland. It's the final leg of the cycling time trial, and Shetland's Carlos Rees knows it will take all his speed and stamina to beat his rival, Andrew Roach. <laughs> Carlos finishes strongly, but the medal positions can only be decided with all the riders home. Seven didn't start. 
62. Again! Who's standing off? Well done. Standing off, standing off, standing off, standing off. Shetland's women lose 5-0 against Bermuda. They play good football. So, believe you me, do not be downhearted. They just seem to come at us and come at us and come at us and come at us and come at us. Okay, come at us. Just never stop. We were tired. I'm knackered. Absolutely. They are gonna hump somebody for you. feet are. But tomorrow's another day. It's the medal ceremony for the men's cycling time trial. And so are. Medal position from Shetland. Carlos Bride! <laughs> the archery competition opens in blustery conditions. Windy conditions Sandra's team know well. Team's Ryan doing it so far. What? The, what are we lying? Ryan is second just now, Sarah's oh third. Oh. And Morag's winning the gold and the record. And both oh teams God. are in the medals. Oh my God. Oh, what lovely. I think, it, I think it's the Shetland oh. conditions that are suiting oh. them. This oh, yes, because I've already said to me they're like conditions. blustering, they're no longer for it. Oh yeah. my heaven. It's, it's super. It's super, super. I mean, the sun is shining. I jokingly said the sun will definitely be shining on the first day of archery. I didn't say there was going to be a 100 mile an hour gale. <laughs> so the sun's shining. It has to be a bonus. The men's football competition starts well for Shetland. Captain John Monte sees his team make steady progress. He knows their big matches will be at the end of the week. On the track, long distance runner Ian Williamson has opted to compete in the 10,000 metres. So here we go, 10 athletes, 75 laps. Ian has made a good start and finds himself towards the front of the field. But with only a few laps run, it becomes clear that two runners have set a punishing pace and streak ahead, lapping every other runner in the race. Ian struggles on, running against his injury as the race for the line ends in a spectacular sprint finish down the home straight. Michael Sanchez of Gibraltar takes gold. Yeah. 
Ian Williamson crosses the line in fourth position, just out of the middle. Oh, so disappointed, you know. I withdrew for the half marathon and thought, well, I'll give the 10,000 to go, but there's just nothing there. The missed training is just too much. So so disappointed because I really wanted to run well here in the last time in games in front of a fantastic spot of hate. But, uh, it's just... Uh, can we do it? football team battle on, still losing, still failing to register a single goal. I think even though we've lost, I think everybody still feels it's a learning curve and we'll just try harder next time. Time is running out for the Shetland women's football team. But Shetland's children have a second chance to show what they can do. Their performance was abandoned in the torrential rain of the opening ceremony. Now the theme of the sea is brought back to the Island Games arena. Shetland's men celebrate a crucial goal. The winner of this game against the Isle of Man goes into the final, guaranteed gold or silver medal. The loser will play off for bronze. Shetland have already gone further than ever before, but they need to hang on to that 1-0 lead. The stage is set for an exciting finale to the games, but Sandra's archery team is now struggling with the fickle weather that earlier seemed to be their local advantage. Billy Finney, a gold medal hope, is knocked out of the head-to-head -head competition. I got a nine. Oh, I was really disappointed yeah. for Billy. It's a, a sudden death thing, it's really... It's really hard. It's it, comes, hard. it comes down to your tie break, one arrow. One arrow Couldn't is just not enough. No. <laughs> Three arrows would be fine. <laughs> but when yeah. it's just really it's, upset it's... for Billy. The head-to-head -head archery competition is tense. Competitors fire in turns. 
Shetland's medal prospects seem to be on the wane. Nine, seven, six. Well, as far as we know, um, Sarah's not got a bronze. Unless something up there is something we've not seen down here. Um, so she'll be really disappointed. <laughs> I'm just sorry I had to knock you out. Well. My friend. <laughs> but she's still got the team medals to go for this afternoon, so I hate to say it again, but we're still in with a chance. Come on, the Shetland women are now playing for their honour. Their ambition had been to take a point, or even score. Suddenly, it's an evenly balanced match against Guernsey. The Channel Island fight back, taking an early equaliser. Oh, Christ! Then Guernsey score again to go 2-1 up. It's an equaliser, a second goal for Shetland. As the match finishes, they have a point. Shetland are off the bottom of the league table. Sandra's archers finally have their own cause for celebration. Morag Hewson takes a gold. <coughs> and the team event brings a long, tense day of head-to-head -head archery to a close. Well done, Billy. Come on! Come on! Come on. Come on. The silver medal with a score of 2-2-6. Goes to Shetland. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm first. Don't you start. <laughs> it's just super for them. Totally deserve it. Presenting my own sport, my own team, we a medal. I mean, can you beat that? Excellent, absolutely excellent. You'll be honest, we've been down there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'll try this. <laughs> well done. Thank you. <laughs> it just means so much to me. I mean, it's, it's my sport, it's archery. It's what got me into it to begin with. It's, I'm being there. I came who they feel for the other side. I came who I felt when I got it, and now I came what it's like to present them. So it just means so much. It's 7 a.m. on Walsa, the last day of the Island Games. For John Montgomery, months of preparation end this afternoon. It's a big commitment. Anybody that wants to play football on a regular basis here in Shetland is going to have to do a lot of travelling and spend a lot of time. Or the Island Games, we were probably away from home maybe three times a week, every night. And when you're at the fishing for the other week, you're home, then it's a, it's a big commitment. That's the biggest game I'm ever going to play, I think. We're starting to get pretty excited, but hopefully we can uh, do it. I think uh, everybody will be up for it tonight, no question. The thing is, that's it. We're seeing a lot of new faces this year. Mm. As the track and field events come to a close, Sandra watches the women's 1,500 metres with Bo Frickenstam from the Swedish island, Gotland. Bo is the chairman of the International Island Games Association. Somebody said, well, why do you have the games? Why have the games in other islands? And I mean, that's a difficult one to answer, isn't it? Because there's lots of reasons, but... Many reasons, but... Uh... 
the major reason to me is that uh, to develop and encourage friendship between island communities because that's in our constitution, that's the first objective. Uh, but there are also other things like uh, the only opportunity for athletes on our sm small islands to compete like this yeah. at an international, international level. level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, that's very important to them. And that the, so many politicians are coming to our games yeah. now, that's yeah. also evidence of that the games are gaining in importance yeah. in building bridges between island communities. It's going to be a happy but very sad occasion tonight. <laughs> it will. And Closing uh, ceremony. You, I think the people in Shetland will feel very empty next oh. week. It's the end of the women's football campaign. Not a time of victory, but still a time of celebration. Okay. Well, lasses, that's the end. That's it over with. Okay? But that's just the start. I am so proud, absolutely proudest punch. I've probably never been as proud of this, even with men's football team. It's just great, absolutely fantastic. And the amount of girls in Shelton has come up to me and said, oh, when are you going to get league scoring? Yeah, when, yeah. yeah. I wish I was in it. I wish I'd come to training. Yeah. Well, that you didn't. Cool. So. Yeah. <laughs> And you're not. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Thanks. Shut up. <laughs> the men's football final in Gilbertson Park is the focus for the last event of the games. The men's football final. Shetland against Guernsey. Extra ferries have brought supporters to every vantage point in and around the ground. Shetland have won their best ever tally of 45 medals, including nine golds. But this would be the sweetest victory of all. A quarter of the population are watching or listening to the match live on radio. Perhaps an upset on the cards. Guernsey have not been beaten in Island Games football since 1997 as Johnston breaks for Shetland. Johnston trying to get past two tackles. It's a flying challenge by John Nodes and this time it was a foul and this time he does go into the book and that is going to cause problems for Guernsey. Uh, they've got more players uh, on bookings. It's a free kick. Flaws is over it, as is Bray. Flaws takes it hard and low, it hits the wall, but Bray gets it back, midway inside the half. Floats a ball in, looking for Jameson. Jameson heads it down to Smith. Smith shoots, fantastic save. Jameson, the rebound of the header. And he comes the end. And penalty oh, given. Sam Corcoran, it's a penalty. 15 minutes into the second half of this Island Games final, it's a penalty to Shetland. Brian. You can hear just what this means to these fans. Montgomery, the captain, for Shetland, for this penalty to make it 1-0. He looks, the whistle goes, here comes Montgomery, he shoots, what a goal! John Montgomery, hard and low into the left-hand corner, he's running about like a madman, the Shetland crowd has gone wild! It's Shetland 1, Guernsey 0. Absolutely amazing, third penalty of the tournament for John Montgomery, the fans going absolutely wild here at Gilberton. 1-0 to Shetland. 62 minutes gone then of this uh, second half of the Island Games final. It's 1-0 to Shetland. Could this be the biggest upset in Island Games history at football? I can't think of a bigger upset in Island Games ever on the magnitude of Shetland beating Guernsey in a final. Shetland looks to break again through Bray. Bray beats one man. Bray the shot and low. What a goal from Duncan Bray. It's 2-0 to Shetland. 20 minutes of the second half and the crowd at Gilbertson Park has gone ballistic. A fantastic goal from Duncan Bray. Took on his man, drives the ball low into the bottom left-hand corner. Absolutely magnificent strike from Duncan Bray. Dominic Hume has it in midfield for Guernsey. He fires it forward, looking for Darren Martin. Martin might be in here. Martin, though, is challenged by Montgomery. In fact, he's a judge who fouled Montgomery, the centre-half. We've now played five minutes of stoppage time. The party is, will begin five minutes late then here in Shetland at Gilbertson Park in Lerwick. And that's it. The referee's whistle has gone. Listen to this. 
the gold medal goes to Shetland. Shetland 2, Guernsey 0. As chairman of the Island Games Association of Shetland, I hand back to you the flag of your island, both in token of our friendship and goodwill towards you and as a momentum of the 11th Island Games held here in Shetland in 2005. Every Games is unique, so what is no better and no worse as any other Games, but it's unique to Shetland. Mm. And everybody's been coming up to me, just everybody from all the different sports and all the different islands has been coming up to me and congratulating Shetland on everything, so absolutely surpassed my wildest dreams. <laughs>